Hello, I'm Dr. Jesse Patrick Turner, a.k.a. The Walking Man. Uh, I'm a professor of literacy, elementary, and early childhood education at Central Connecticut State University. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the resistance. So Diane Ravage's new book, Slaying Goliath, uh, her first three chapters outline the corruption in a market-based education system that is completely failing our teachers, our public schools, and our children. And then chapter four begins, she says, the resistance. She, it, she opens you up to the resistance. I'm one of those uh, people in that, in that chapter four, uh, and one of the reasons I'm in that chapter four is that uh, I did this walk from Connecticut to D.C. It's a 400-mile walk uh, to protest high-stakes assessment, and I'm the one that asked Diane Ravage when she was speaking at Yale, which she, we were planning a Save Our Schools march and rally in 2011 in D.C. We had no money. We had, we had nothing. We, but uh, uh, I, I was the one to ask her. And when I asked Diane, would she come to the rally, would she speak, Diane Rabbit said yes. So she tells that story in The Resistance. But I want to go back to what makes a professor at a university what makes a professor leave acad the academic circle, leave his classroom, and walk 400 miles, walk for 40 days? What makes him do that? Well, I'll tell you what makes him do it. It's uh, cell phones back in those days in 2010. I had the little flip phone, and I really didn't like cell phones. And, uh, but I had a cell phone so my wife could call me and say, how come you're so late? And she was the only one that had my number. And, but that's all it was. Or bring home some milk and get some bread. And one day, my cell phone rings. I'm driving. And I pull over the car. And I'm like, and I'm looking at it. I know it's not my wife. And I don't know who it is. And, um, and I pick up the phone. And I say, hello. And, and it's, a, it's a woman on the phone. And she says, uh, Dr. Turner, my name is so-and-so. And my son, Manny. Uh, uh, he had an application for your literacy center, and Manny, uh, Manny's struggling with reading uh, this year, and, and you know, but uh, he didn't get in, and I know there's limited space, and I, I, first thing I, I, I said to myself, I'm going to yell at my secretary because she gave the cell phone number out, I'm certain of it, but secondly, I, I have compassion at heart, and I said, well, we'll get Manny in, and, you know, the next time around, I'll, I'll definitely let him in. And she said, I want to talk about something with Manny. And she said, Manny's in the second grade. When Manny, I've done all the right things, Dr. Turner, all the things I said, you read to your child every night. We, I would read to him in bed. I read to him. I read to him when he was in the womb. And she said, Dr. Turner, and it was wonderful in the kindergarten. It was wonderful into the end of the first grade. And I said, what happened at the end of the first grade that, that changed it? She said, well, they started giving Manny the DRA assessment. He would read, and then they have to get it correct, and the teacher would take the numbers down, and she'd tell him what level he was at. She said, every night for six years of my, my son's life, going to bed and reading to him was the most pleasurable thing that ever happened to me. Now, today, Manny got in trouble at school, she said. And once they started testing him, he, it's a battle every night to read. Even when I'm reading to him, it's a battle. She says, but in school, they had these, him and his other friend, uh, you go, you ask to go to the bathroom, the bathroom's down the hall, you can't go alone, so the teacher gets another student, so you two go together, and Manny and his best friend will walk into the bathroom, and they saw the, the, the teacher resource room, the parent resource room, and, you know, second graders, she said, they went in, and on the wall were these three houses, and they were the three little pigs. There was the hay house, there was the wood house, there was the brick house. Everybody knows that. And Manny's little friend looked at it and said, look, look, my name is by the brick house. Manny, your name is by the, your name's by the grass house. You must be the stupidest kid. You're going to get left back. And the next thing, <laughs> the two best friends are physically fighting. Uh, teachers are running and taking them in. 
what Manny's mother says. I, I want to talk about the literacy, Dr. Turner, but they say my son has an anger problem. He's angry, and I don't want him to fight. I didn't want, and the whole thing went on, and she said, I wanted to talk to them about why he doesn't want me to read to him anymore and what they did to him and, and how it's hurting him. So, you see, that was the day. It's a little emotional. But that was the day that I realized that to win this battle for children, I couldn't just write the research article. I just couldn't go to the conference and give the presentation. I couldn't just go to the legislature and, and lobby for more money. That was the day I needed to take a personal stance. And so I knew that somebody had to stand up to this, this idea that a, a test score defines the potential of our children. Now, I'm not against testing. I'm just saying if that's the sole measure, if that's all you got, that's like being, you know, the, the worst kind of boxer in the world is a boxer that just is a, has one shot, I don't know, a jab or, or a hook and has nothing else. The best kind of boxer is a combination box, a boxer that goes to the head, the boxer that goes to the side, the boxer that goes to the midsection, the boxer that moves, that, that does it all. Uh, that's the way to do it. So the idea that we're reducing children to test score, that's why I'm part of the resistance because I refuse to allow billionaires and millionaires and market-based economists and Wall Streeters and legislators and policymakers, I refuse to let them reduce our children to some kind of data point on some scatter chart that they can follow their profits for. You know, we, you predict the prison population by the third grade reading scores. You know what we do? We don't send in, when we find that our third graders, 40% of them, 45% of them are struggling with reading at grade level, do we send an army of tutors into them? No. We build more prisons in the future. So if you want to know why I'm part of the resistance, <laughs> it's because of Manny. That's why. It's because of Manny's mother. It's personal. It's, it's from the heart.